So, you want to buy a house, but your chances of affording one look pretty, pretty bleak. Or maybe you're just tired of paying stupid rent all the time. The economy, am I right? Well, if you have a paperclip sitting around, an enterprising spirit, a moderately charming smile, and a little extra time on your hands, that paperclip might just be able to help you out. Say what? I know, it sounds crazy, but it's been done before. Really? Do you remember this? Canadian gentleman Kyle McDonald of Montreal took one red paperclip and via a series of 14 trades over about a year from 2005 to 2006, turned that red paperclip into a charming two-story farmhouse in Kipling, Saskatchewan. Here's what he did. He started with a singular, stunning red paperclip. Look at that beauty, sleek and elegant but not exactly worth the cost of a house. Not even in Detroit. Sorry, Detroit. I like Detroit. I mean, you, you just know, I mean, the housing costs. I'm, sh I'm sure, I, I'm sure if I keep digging, I'll, I'll get out of this hole. Moving on. So unemployed Kyle thinks to himself, I don't have a job. I want to live in a house and all I have is this paperclip. Instead of sitting there with the paperclip and maybe applying for jobs like the rest of us noobs, he gets hit by lightning or drops acid or otherwise stretches his very good brain to produce the thought, I bet I could turn this paperclip into a house. He posts about the paperclip on Craigslist or something like it, saying he's looking to make a trade. A pair of kind women in Vancouver were willing and made a trade. That paperclip for this very elegant fish pin. This to me is the greatest leap of faith. The person who does the most for the barterer is the one who's willing to give something interesting in exchange for that paperclip. The people who do it for the story or because it seems like a nice thing to do, I guess. They're the real heroes. So he's got the fish pen. He posts that. A potter in Seattle offers him this incredible doorknob in exchange for the fish pen. Now some of us might have stopped here because, I mean, look at that doorknob. It's perfect, but not Kyle McDonald. He pressed on. A man in Massachusetts who wanted the doorknob to fix a broken knob on his espresso maker traded him for an old camp stove. A marine sergeant in California traded him a 100 watt generator for the camping stove. In Queens, a particularly fun young man traded him a neon Budweiser sign and an empty keg he promised to fill, in IOU form, packaged as an instant party kit for the generator. A Montreal radio host who called wind of the whole thing offered Kyle his least favorite snowmobile in exchange for the party kit. A snowmobile magazine offered him a trip for two to the Canadian Rockies for the ski do. By this point, people were interviewing McDonald on TV and the CEO of a company whose logo he wore on TV contacted him and they ended up trading one of his trips for a large van, really more of a moving truck. He traded the van for a recording contract with Metalworks, a relatively well-known recording studio in Mississauga, Ontario. A woman named Jody in Phoenix offered him a year's free rent in the unrented half of her duplex for the recording contract. One of Jody's neighbors heard about this and said, for that free rent, I'll give you an afternoon with my boss. Not something most of us could offer in exchange for much of anything, but Leslie happened to work for Alice Cooper, so Kyle said yes, of course. Now this next trade got Kyle a lot of flack, and you're going to think it sounds pretty crazy. He traded that afternoon with Alice Cooper, after spending an afternoon with Alice himself, I guess they threw in a free one on the side, for a motorized light-up kiss snow globe. If you haven't heard this before, you're probably all like, say what? And what's that? And where's the beef? And most of the time, you'd be right. But our clever Kyle McDonald, he had a plan. See, throughout this process, he'd been getting tons of offers of different trades and logging them away in his mind castle for when he had something good to trade in exchange for what was offered. And one of the things that had been offered was a speaking role in a Corbin Burnson film called Donna On Demand. Corbin Burnson is an actor you might recognize from Psych, Billions, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, The Young and the Restless, Jag, or all of the major league movies. And he also happens to be, did you guess it? One of the world's biggest collectors of snow globes with a collection of over 8,000 shaky shaky snow snows. Once Kyle has a role in a Hollywood film on his hands, he figures he's got to be pretty close to getting that house. And he's right. The economic development officer of the town of Kipling, Saskatchewan, got in touch with him. They had some empty houses there owned by the town. They knew he ultimately wanted to land on a house, 
but would he want to make a trade? They decided the trade would be that they'd throw a big party and host an idol-like competition to cast that role in Kipling, and Kyle would, in exchange, get to live in the house, seemingly indefinitely. And that's what they did. Corbin even came to Saskatchewan to announce the winner. And bing, bang, boom, a paperclip turned into a house. The Mounties came to co-sign the deed and everything, which is apparently a thing. Pretty amazing story. Here's basically how it works. First, it relies on people having a certain sense of humor and, um, whimsy about the whole thing. Especially, like I said, that first person who says, sure, I'll give you something for that paperclip. But more importantly, it relies on something a bit more interesting and frankly, sustainable, which is that people pretty much always have something they're willing or even looking to give away. And if you happen to have something you want to give away and that fits a specific need they have, all the better. One man's junk is another man's treasure is a phrase for a reason. So even when people thought Kyle made a bad trade, or when Kyle thought he'd made a particularly good trade, it all sort of evened out, because the people who made the trade were happy with what they'd gotten rid of and gained. Oh, and once it got to a certain level, people started to see it as an opportunity, one must suppose. Or they did it to be part of the story that was making the news. Or by simply gaining notoriety at all, it put it in front of more eyes than Craigslist alone could have mustered. People noticed, and that probably got him farther than the paperclip and Goodwill alone ever could have. So all you need is a paperclip, a lot of people with a sense of whimsy and something they can give away, and then national attention from the media. And then maybe you two can live in Kipling, Saskatchewan. By way of update, as of 2008, Kyle was looking to trade the house for something else. In the end, his wife works in Montreal, so they don't get to use the Kipling house too much, and he wants someone local to have and use it. I didn't really think it through when we got the house, and there's a huge opportunity there. So I'm looking to trade with someone who has an idea for it, he said to Wired. They reported that, as of print date in June 2008, the only proposed trade he'd received was one red paper clip. He was considering the offer. But I hear the pessimists in the room saying, I'm no fool. Surely that won't work now. It won't work for me. Well, don't be too hasty. From late November 2016 to early March 2017, walking in McDonald's footsteps, 18-year-old Amber Hollop, who I'm 70% sure lives in Bourbon A, Illinois, based solely on the college t-shirt she's wearing and some photos, and the fact we know she's in college, traded up from a blue paperclip to a Yamaha MOX661 key synthesizer workstation, which is worth about $1,200 to $1,400 retail. Now that's not quite a house, but that's not bad for a little over four months. And based on a quick truly a search of Bourbon A, that would pay rent in a very nice shared apartment, assuming she had two other roommates also capable of paying rent for most of a semester. Hey, three to four months free rent from a paperclip is nothing to sneeze at. I mean, if you don't count all of the labor that Shirley went into finding and making the trades. If only these people could have just traded labor for rent or a house or something that will allow them to... Wait, no, that's a job. Bad, bad, no. No, I just invented jobs again. <laughs> Moving on. She did a pretty good job with that paperclip. Kyle did a great job with his paperclip. And the good people of BuzzFeed Video tried a similar but vastly truncated experiment to see how far they could get in a week bartering in LA, starting with one paperclip each. They hit the streets of LA and ended up turning their paperclips into a pretty sweet tour of Hollywood and friendship. They said the real prize was friendship. That's nice, isn't it? The real paperclip was the friends we made along the way. Still, it's $79 value, so pretty good for one week. All that said, if every single person started trying to trade up from a paperclip, perhaps a paperclip and faith in humankind market would get flooded and you wouldn't be able to do it anymore. Like when Kickstarter started and at first you got like one request and you were like, of course I'll give my friend $5 to follow their dream. But then you got like 30 more requests in a row and we're like, what am I, made out of money? What I'm saying is, don't believe your parents when they tell you they have infinite love and there's always enough to go around. Love is a finite resource, so you should get it while the getting's good. Now somebody turn a paperclip into a house and trade me something for free rent somewhere. These videos don't make themselves. If you enjoyed this video, then why not subscribe? Hit that bell icon as well so you're more likely to get notified of our noble answers to your burning questions. Also, if you have any questions you want answered, make sure to tell me in the comments section down below. And to keep filling your brain with regal knowledge, check out these videos here. They're magnificent.